Hey guys, Dave from the Auto Station here. Today, uh, I went out to the range with the AR pistol build. I got it zeroed, did some reliability testing and stuff. Everything looks good to go on it. <clears throat> did a couple mag dumps, make sure everything's still working okay once um, you know the barrel starts heating up and all that. I tried a couple different magazines. I got some Lancer uh, magazines, steel magazines, mag poles. They all ran fine. I did 62 grain green tips, 55 grain ball. Pretty much everything that I use. Everything looks good to go. Um, <clears throat> I think I, I, I'm pretty comfortable using this in a home defense situation. You know, I know using some of these, you know, built guns or, or whatever modified guns. You know, that's kind of a, a area to be concerned about, especially when you're using them for like carry or, um, you know, home defense and stuff, but I'm pretty comfortable with it. I figured I'd go ahead today and paint it. <clears throat> Painting is relatively easy. Um, you pretty much just got to give it a full send. It's not hard. You don't need to do a whole lot, especially for an AR-15. ARs are a pretty well sealed up system. I tape the optic just because I don't want to, you know, really paint my EOTech. Um, that's just a personal preference. I or I taped up the muzzle. Normally I wouldn't, but uh, with the Q Cherry Bomb, mm -hmm. it has exposed threads on there. I want to make sure um, I don't have any, you know, kind of thread locking effects uh, just from the paint. So um, I tape that up. I tape up the trigger. Um, that's really not that big of a deal. Um, I just want to try and, and mitigate as much paint as I can from getting into the receiver and, um, you know, adhering to some of the springs and stuff in there potentially causing problems. But past that, it's a super easy process. Um, you know, I don't really do a whole lot of prep work and stuff. I know some people do, some people don't. But, uh, you know, if you use it enough, you will get wear and tear uh, on there. I think it actually looks kind of good. Uh, once there is some wear going, so um, that's just my preference. But uh, today I'm gonna do kind of a tan uh, or, or desert kind of pattern on there. Super simple, nothing crazy. I'm just gonna do a base layer of tan and then do some kind of brown striping on there. Painting is always kind of a personal preference for the most part. Um, I really don't think it really does a whole lot. Camouflage is like kind of effective but it's really only effective you know at great distance and not typically in an urban environment um, you know there's ways to not stick out black definitely sticks out it looks nice and clean and stuff but um, you know in kind of a, a, a rural area or whatever um, you're definitely gonna be better off doing some sort of earthy tone um, that being said, you know, if you have like blaze orange or hot pink or something crazy, that's definitely going to stick out more. But uh, in kind of a tactical setting, um, paint really doesn't do a whole lot, you know. Unless you're running a ghillie suit or whatever, um, camouflage is pretty, um, a, a pretty, pretty much, you know, negligible. Um, you know, there is something to be said about hunting and stuff, but that is more, you know, I guess, you know, animals have a, a less developed brain. That's a whole different. Uh, topic I guess but um, as far as it goes for me it's just aesthetics so um, we'll go ahead and get out there get painting I'm not too worried about my rear sight here my front one should be here on Saturday and then um, that's already tan so I figured I'd paint this black one that I got uh, for super cheap um, you know and as long as you don't paint enough where you're getting dripping effects uh, and having to worry about it covering the rear aperture um, I'm not too worried about it so let's go ahead and get out there this Krylon uh, camouflage series paint works really good it's non reflective pretty cheap and it's gonna give me pretty much exactly what I want so here we go The nice part about this stuff is it dries really quick. Um, you know, you get do a kind of a light layer, wait a couple minutes, do another layer, and uh, so on and so forth. So, time for a second layer.
Okay, second layer is pretty much dry. Flip it over. We'll do the other side. That one's pretty dry. So what I like to do once I do the next color, which is again the Krylon, um, you know, kind of brown color, I like to do from farther up. I will do a, you know, just kind of a misting to break up a little bit of the pattern, and then I'll do uh, a more defined line. So it'll look kind of like this. I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but it just helps make uh, make it look not quite as uniform. So that'll just take a, a couple seconds to dry, and then we'll just do kind of a 45 degree um, slant on the uh, or with the the brown. Alright, so we'll let that dry and then we'll flip it over and then what we're going to try and do is, if you can see, dark, light, dark, light, we're going to try and get the other side so the brown is opposite. So it's going to be a brown spot where the light spot is and then a light spot where the dark is. Flip it over, do the same thing to the other side. So we started at the tip here with brown, so we're going to leave that tan. Go up a little bit from there. That looks pretty good to me, but uh, if you can see right over the ejection port cover, um, it does look a little bit more brown or, or too brown in that spot, so I'm going to go ahead and dust it a little bit with the uh, tan again. pretty good to me so we'll let that dry and I think we'll call her done all right so the last process um, <clears throat> is to just take off the tape that's pretty easy I didn't have to tape off a whole lot I wasn't trying to save a whole lot of anything so um, let me just get the rest of this off 
I think the whole process probably took me, you know, 15, 20 minutes or so. And that was letting the paint dry, you know, for a decent amount of time. The really nice stuff about that Krylon is that it says right on the bottle, like, 15 minutes or less to dry. Um, if you're doing, you know, pretty light coats and stuff, you really don't even need to wait that long. You know, probably just, uh, you know, three or four minutes and you're probably good to go. So, um, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out here. Looks pretty good. Um, good enough for me. <clears throat> the problem is if you don't let it dry enough, especially like when you flip it over, is you're going to get stuff like that, right? Um, you know, putting it on the ground or hanging it up. Uh, or versus hanging it up. Hanging it up is going to, you know, give you, you know, the, be the best coverage and stuff. But, uh, you know, I'm okay with that. That looks pretty good to me. This is usable. Sight looks okay. I can still see through it. So, uh, I'm not upset about that at all. Super happy with the way it turned out. I am, however, going to let this dry kind of outside my gun safe overnight just to, you know, make sure it's all completely dry before I start putting it away. Um, other than that, that's pretty much all I got for you guys. Everything works as it should. Even if you got a little paint in, uh, like, the bolt carrier group or chamber or something, in my experience, not a big deal because usually it's such a small amount that it, it's, it doesn't really matter. It'll burn up or uh, wear off anyways. I think if you had, like, you know... A, a decent amount, like if you actually sprayed into the chamber, that'd be a different story. But um, you know, I don't, I don't think a little bit in there is gonna hurt it at all. So that's pretty much all I got for you guys. If you thought this video was cool, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.